This episode of the Cold Popsha podcast was brought to you by our Patreon. If you want to tell us which films we should watch, listen to up to two extra exclusive podcasts a month, or give us something to discuss in our new post credit scenes at the end of each episode, then please consider joining the cult and donating at www.patreon.com slash coldpopsha. Hey, hey. Welcome to a belated episode of the Cole Popsha Podcast. Uh, I'm Richard. But I'm joined- also one that, that oh. I hope is also one that I hope is like hot off the presses, you know. This is coming to you mere hours after it was recorded. Um maybe yeah, but- even one hour, depending on how long this episode <laughs> is. If it's uh yeah, I mean forty five minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Do that in an hour. Yeah. So it's actually not <laughs> late. If anything, it's early because of how quick <laughs> yeah. the turnaround is. It's late yeah. compared to our usual schedule. Um, yeah. And I'm back. I'm back, everybody. Yeah, I was back. gone. Whee! And now I'm back. I'm replacing Jess, the only woman. Um, yeah, in this well, just because all- it's Oscar season, you know, we want to like... Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> this all-male reboot of last week's podcast. And Richard, I, I, so I edited last week's podcast despite only appearing in it in flashbacks. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and I really like how you you explained my absence in a tantalizing, mysterious way. You were like, AJ's not here and... It doesn't really matter why he's not here. And I, I wanna I wanna keep the mystery alive this week by not not explaining where I was. Good. But rest assured, everybody, it was mysterious. <laughs> nice. And you and if you if and if you knew where I was, you'd be like, Oh man, I'm so glad I knew where he was. <laughs> <laughs> um all right. So uh we're also joined by Aaron. Hello. Who you hey, Aaron. Aaron's from last Aaron's week, back. Who appeared back. in the um in the present day timeline of last week's <laughs> podcast. <laughs> yeah. Um okay, so uh the Oscars have happened. An mm. historical win. Yeah. Uh for for quite a few reasons. So, um Parasite obviously took out Best Picture, the first foreign film to do so, the first South Korean film to be represented at the Oscars. Um well, I say first foreign film, but first uh, film not in the English language, I guess, is the because technically the artist is a French production, although it has one line of dialogue and it is in English. Um, mm. So, um, but Parasite's generally considered the first foreign language. It's the first foreign language film to win Best Picture, and boy howdy, is it a good movie! And did it deserve its win? And and it uh, also took home the most uh, awards of the night with four. Nice. Um, which is yeah, bloody bloody good on it. Good on you, director yeah, Bong. Bloody good on you. And it's also historical in being the first film, the first Best Picture winner to actually be like <laughs> real great. No, I'm kidding. There are others. There are others, but it, it rarely feels like films as good as 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 good as Parasite win Best Picture. Yeah, like this. And- this is probably my favorite Best Picture winner. Not since Crash have we seen such quality. <laughs> <laughs> I saw a tweet that was like, "Wow, what a great night!" They even they even went down and hunted out um, hunted down Crash's best picture Oscar and took it back. <laughs> <laughs> um, so let's. So we we all yeah. had we all had different experiences with with the Oscars this year as well. I wasn't able to watch it live. I only I caught the best the best picture winner, but that's about all I saw. Um, yeah. Aaron, did you watch it? No, I didn't. I was busy working on a TV show in the office and didn't happen to see any of the Oscars. It's interesting that you're working <laughs> on a TV show and no one like kept updated. Yeah, no, it wasn't the. It was weird. There was no like big kind of atmosphere around it. People were just sort of quietly typing in the office, except for one of the like producer's assistants who was like, "Oh, look, Taika won an Oscar. Cool." And then she watched Spoilers. his acceptance speech, and that was that was about it. Yeah, well, I um yeah, I took the day off work to watch the Oscars, and I just watched it by myself at home. Uh, while a a chili um slowly cooked away in my slow cooker, um, which and and I had it uh, not long ago. It was very nice. I didn't have all of it. I didn't eat an entire slow cooker's worth of chili, but it was very good. Aaron tried some. My God, it Richard. was good actually. <laughs> it was vegetarian as well, guys. Yeah. Um. And so, uh, 
Yeah, I, I I took the Oscar the day off work because um, I don't know if you guys have or if anyone listening is super passionate about something and then someone tries to talk to them about it and it's like, you don't know as much as I do. <laughs> um, and that's not me being like an elitist prick, knowing slightly more than everyone I work with. Uh, I work with people who... Uh, know I like the Oscars and want to and are forced to because it's a a news organization they're forced to pretend that they care about entertainment but they don't and it's really frustrating to me um so I I just cannot be around called out um (laughs) and but apparently yeah there was uh big cheers in the newsroom when Taika uh won which he of course won the uh, award for uh, best adapted screenplay but uh yeah since he's a kiwi um and they're like yes now we have a reason to care about the oscars um <laughs> um but anyway for those of us who uh you know actually care about this here's uh here's this list of winners and we'll kind of go through i mean yeah we don't really have a game plan for this episode it's kind of just a a post oscars chat so uh best vfx went to 1917 um so yeah that was a pretty, pretty good one. That, and I remember with, when that one was um, announced, I was like, 1917 just won Best Picture. <laughs> and boy, was I wrong. Wow. And boy, were my arms you, tied. You declared... Um, <laughs> you declared... <laughs> I just declared 1917 Best Picture, and boy, are my arms tied. <laughs> um, you declared uh, last week, Richard, yeah. um, that Avengers Endgame was a shoe in for VFX. Yeah, I thought so. And that's why I thought 1917 coming in with the upset... Um. Yeah. Mm. And then I was like, "It's it's it's all the cards are in its favor. It's going to win." What it, what wow. does VFX cover like specifically as a category? Uh, yeah, like well, you look at the other nominees: Avengers: Endgame, Irishman, Lion King, Star Wars. It's um computer generated effects. Right. Although um the Tr- uh, Tron the movie was um disqualified for being nominated. For best visual effects, because the academy thought it was cheating to use a computer, right? To generate effects. What the heck? <laughs> and boy, are their arms tired. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I, I mean, I guess yeah, it had good VFX. Often the best VFX are indivisible. Um, indivisible. I'd love it if we didn't. Uh, uh, by ten, indivisible, indivisible by themselves. Undergrad. Um the, the the I I would love it if we didn't spend as much time on the kind of let's you know the awards that the shithole no let's cares breeze about. through the technical <laughs> awards the, 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 the fucking shithole awards that nobody <laughs> gives a crap about like <laughs> let's just call it like it is man let's just call it like it is yeah um okay film editing um two professional editors here um uh, what do we think of Ford v Ferrari winning, AJ? The, I mean, the best editing is invisible. <laughs> the, 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 yeah, sure. Like, yeah, yeah. It's uh, now, yeah. you know, now that you're drawing my attention to the editing of the film. Yep. Yeah, it, it, it's <laughs> yeah. certainly the film with the most editing, and I think that's why a lot of people are like, oh, you know, it's one of the mm. ones that people complain about. And it's like, yeah, I mean, it's a well edited film, like. Don't get me wrong. What else was nominated? Uh, the Irishman, Jojo Rabbit, Joker, and Parasite. Jojo Rabbit and Parasite, it's worth noting, won the big awards at the American Cinema Editors Awards. So a group of editors think that they're um, good. Although the, the, award, the Academy Award for Best Film Editing was also chosen by editors. Man, I'm only just now realizing some pretty, um, some pretty sore losers probably coming out of this. I've been so wrapped up in, in all the good news that I forgot to think about the one, the films that deserved recognition that, that aren't going to get any. Mm, yeah, get once, any. Uh, Irishman didn't win anything. Yeah. Uh, but one that did win something is Little Women, which won Best Costume Design. Nope. Period film. Yeah, I mean, this is this is one of those, like, yeah, sure, why yeah, not? Yeah, pretty classic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Makeup and hair styling, bombshell. This one, actually, yeah, this, this is a pretty well-deserved one, I think. Um, the way Charlize Theron's... Theron's uh, transformation into Megan Kelly is fantastic. It still manages to like look exactly like her, but look kind of like Charlie's and or still look like a human being. And also John Lithgow's transformation to uh, Roger Ailes is great. Um, it's the same team that did the fat suit for um, Darkest Hour as well. 
the um they're good yeah they are good aren't they, they? Are. oh they can transform a person <laughs> do it. uh they also um yeah so they won for um darkest hour um and bombshell after being nominated for click and norbit oh my god <laughs> mm. which hey the fat suits are great in them and yeah. a historical legacy to, to, to lead uh, all right in terms of uh more like a lot of these aren't surprising and a lot of the ones that are surprising are like the ones where you're like this was like, like i feel like there aren't any oh pff, that didn't deserve it that yeah. that you that we weren't already expecting you know um cinematography went to roger deakins for 1917 which is fair enough yeah totally fair enough yep I love it. I love it. I love Roger Deakins. He should have more Oscars than he does, and it's like the seal broke. The the um he got it for Blade Runner twenty forty nine, and now he, I bet he's just gonna get he's gonna get at least one more Oscar in his in the time of his career. I think. Hundred percent. I think people are coming around to to recognize. <laughs> people are finally you know, coming around to Roger Deakins. Well, no, it's that I said that wrong. It's more that um. The you know how there's there's the how like Quentin Tarantino or Steven Spielberg were the first like um household name directors, yeah. right? I think while I wouldn't go as far as calling Roger Deakins a household name DOP, he's the closest we've got at the yeah, moment. It's true. And people people should be seeing that, I think, with, mm. the, with him being yeah. awarded with stuff. Yeah, like And also nineteen seventeen is not just a gimmicky one shot, it's it's be- a beautifully composed beautifully composed shots that happen to all stitch together in yeah. what looks like one take mm. and yeah, i'm saying sure. that here and now shit that's bold yeah that's a hot take yeah i'm i'm good yeah yeah <laughs> it's hot take when, when it's literally the oscar winner being like hey hot take Roger Deakins deserved the best, best hey, cinematography. Hey, hot take. Roger Deakins is a good cinematographer. <laughs> <laughs> um, production design went to Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Now, this was what, like, um, I had an argument with, well, not an argument, but a discussion with Rowan while this was, uh, we were watching this A beer knuckled fist fight. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, that, like, because I, I agree, Parasite, this would have been a great win for Parasite because- the production design is fantastic, but it's like, it's just a nice house. And so the average person watches that and goes, oh, yeah, they just found a nice house. But it's like, it's a character in the film, you know? Yeah. Um, but then that's not nothing against Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, which transformed Hollywood Boulevard 50 years in the past. Like, it's incredible what they what they did. And I love the and story. And you know, that- Hollywood's a character in that film as exactly. well. Exactly. It's, 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 it's one you, of the words almost, in the title. It's almost like Hollywood is a character in the film itself. It's funny as well. So uh, uh, Tarantino had a, a long time partnership with the Weinstein Company for his films, and then um, uh, for some reason I haven't looked into it too much, but their relationship fell through um, for this film, <laughs> um, and he decided not to work with Harvey Weinstein. Um, but th- th- it was essentially like a bidding war for like Tarantino's next film, and so it was like this this huge um thing that everyone wanted and it ended up uh going to sony but i think it was universal like um as part of their bid like transformed hollywood boulevard and like put out all these signs like tarantino look at this like look at the kind of thing we can do and they didn't end up going with them um it was like this massive fucking like stunt to try and get his attention but and who knows you know maybe maybe if he had gone with them he wouldn't have won the oscar he because he's the production designer the (laughs) film wouldn't have won the oscar for for once upon a time in hollywood the oscar he's always wanted best production designer (laughs) 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 you know you know tarantino's a little bit butthurt right now i mean i'm sure everyone who who didn't win is is probably is but like I bet there, there were enough signs to point towards this being his year that um oh yeah for sure I still you know. thought it was going to be even after all of Parasite's ones I still thought they were just going to be like oh once upon a time Hollywood Hollywood ones best wouldn't mm. best picture um mm. uh, sound editing no we yep. finally we bullied the Oscars back into doing <laughs> yeah <laughs> good films again as as is tradition as is the ebb and flow of the oscars year to year <laughs> um sound editing and sound mixing editing went to 4v ferrari mixing went to 1917 um interesting yeah i would have thought that this was 1917 would have won both of these but yeah sweet 4v ferrari won two oscars 4v ferrari was mixing did you say uh, editing editing interesting 
Interesting. <laughs> Aaron's like, God, I wouldn't have given it mixing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but editing for sure. No, it deserved it. <laughs> no, because Richard showed me a video the other week about um I think it was the mixing of the um it was a, like a specific video on yeah, Ford v Ferrari, Ferrari and the I think it was the mixing that they were talking about, wasn't it? I, I kind of went into both a little bit. Yeah. Um, but it, it is super interesting. Yeah, if you if you just, I'm sure if you just look up sound editing or sound mixing of Four B Ferrari, it's like yeah, the other two two of the soundies on it. Um, you're talking about going out and like filming like cars and making sure they got the right ones, and then how you have to create that symphony essentially. Yeah, and even just like the placement of sound inside a cinema and stuff like that mm. to create the effect of bit watching a car race. Yeah. It's just a gimmick. It's just a, it's a gimmicky win. It's just the Doppler effect. That's all it's. It all right. Okay. For. AJ with the hot take. Wow. Jesus. <laughs> Good Lord. Yeah. No. Hot take. Another. Oh, another nuclear hot take. The one award academy. Stop splitting audio. I know. I know audio people or the audio division of Hollywood are the cyclists of Hollywood. <laughs> like they, they get as <laughs> mad like cyclists get mad at um at at cars. But look, I'll say it. I'm I'm in, you know, vaguely in the industry. I know vaguely how most of filmmaking works and I don't really know the difference between sound mixing and sound editing. I ed- I'm going to be editing this po- editing this very podcast and I have no idea what the fuck I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And the sound the is always is. something people talk about. <laughs> and if the I don't and if I don't know what the difference is, then no one knows what the difference is. All right, there I said it. All right. well, I see what we're all thinking. Okay. Um, so Best Original Song went to Elton and Bernie for um, their song from Rocketman. Um, it's interesting, though, because they played all the the nominees for this. Like, they all, they all performed live. Um, man, I Can't Let You Throw Yourself Away from Toy Story 4 by Randy Newman sucks. It's so bad. <laughs> Watching that song, I, I was like, it. Jesus Christ, this is oh, awful. Oh, gosh. Um, but then um, they also randomly, like, so they did this bit where it was like, uh, Lin Manuel Miranda came out and was like, you know, sometimes um, a, a song and a scene like become so synonymous together, and then they're like, here's some of those those examples, and they were like, oh, you know, like played Eye of the Tiger with the, with a montage from Rocky, and they played uh, Breakfast Club, and then like the clip from Say Anything, and then it ended with just like um, Eminem's character from Eight Mile, and then Eminem just came out and performed Lose Yourself. <laughs> And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> like, <laughs> Such a weird choice. Yeah. You, know how, weird, you like- know how movies have songs sometimes? Anyway, here's Eminem. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, um, the, the, the idea that the Oscars, a, a, a organization that is so routinely putting their foot in their mouth and trying to be diversive and cool and continually failing would like, Eminem's such a bad choice if you're wanting to appear progressive. <laughs> like that dude has, has got so much shit in his in his like lyrical content that no one like you know the right, zeitgeist are you, hasn't are you really calling forgiven for him a for. cancellation of Eminem. Uh, I don't think I need a call for it, dude. I think it's the the ticket has been punched. Interesting. <laughs> and also, em, also Eminem fucking sucks. I'll say it. I, <laughs> I hate it. I hate Eminem. <laughs> Man, where, where Man, did all this come from? Good luck. I mean, the Venom song wh- that was horrible. That's the that's that's Eminem's place in public consciousness right now is the terrible Venom song, and they bring him on to. You pre- can't yeah, judge him on the late Eminem. Come on. <laughs> yeah, AJ sucks at making content. The fucking. Um- Have you heard the Lethal Weapon episode? That's early AJ. If, when, yeah. You said don't judge him off late AJ. Yeah, no, I, I, Eminem's great. Like, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, this, is, this is a real weird take, man. Yeah. Oh, it is not. No, loads of people hate Eminem. Now, I'm not the only one, for sure. I don't know. I haven't seen anyone else. But, I, like, Billy I, haven't seen, Eichner- I haven't seen the... the um, yeah, I haven't seen Pop society the- turn against yeah. him. The woke brigade. No, <laughs> uh, uh, B- Billy Eichner tweeted about him. What did he say? Just like t- today, I don't want to say because it has an offensive word in it well, that it. Billy Eichner can say that I cannot say. Uh, calling out Eminem. Is it? Um, I'll <laughs> find it and I'll just. <laughs> is it this word? <laughs> is it this word? Is it? Is it? Is it there? Um, I will find it. Okay, we'll just wait. Yeah. Not not liking Eminem is a very popular opinion. I, I resent the fact that I'm being in any way trailblazing 
Um, okay, he's four hours ago he tweeted, well, you can still sing the word, the F word, um, a million times and still perform at the Oscars. Uh, that's about diversity. Okay. So, and I look to Billy Eichner for all my um, moral ground. <laughs> for, for where to takes. lead the woke brigade. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, this way, guys! <laughs> 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 um <laughs> this way guys a thousand tickets to birds of prey please um, <laughs> um <laughs> this will surely make a dent in the box office <laughs> <laughs> um yeah no i mean i think uh yeah but so the, the, also the story behind eminem uh, performing is that he when his song won for um for when lose yourself won um the academy was like oh do you want to come perform and he was like yeah and they're like you have to censor the song and he was like no nah, fuck it i'm not performing um and so that was them like writing the wrong and allowing him to perform it uncensored but they like bleeped it in the telecast if you watch in the states um although i don't think they bleeped it here but um yeah so that was them kind of like extending an olive branch to allow him to say why now Did they tell him they were gonna bleep it uh, oh, I mean, I, I don't know. I think I think it's just like, hey, you have to perform, you know, like we want you to censor your own song, but whereas like right, for legal like- reasons they can do it. But he's like, I'm not tainting my art by performing it. Yeah. Not in my own kind of way. I just don't understand why now. Why is this the year that we that Eminem gets his right wronged by the Academy? When <laughs> they've they've wronged when so many people. No one this likes year. him now. <laughs> And and they they pick they pick the the one white dude doing it. Right, like, you think Greta you know, Gerwig should like... have come out and performed <laughs> a <laughs> yeah, one yeah, woman too. That's all version yeah. of Little Woman. <laughs> um, like as they just get Greta Gerwig to come out and do like, can you just just um give us some of the things you might have said on set when you were directing, um, Little Woman <laughs> and action. <laughs> or you joke, but there was totally shit like that at, at the Oscars. The, the very little of it I saw at the start. They um, were like, we want to celebrate female directors and stuff. And it's like, what a weird there, there push was a lot of to that, watch. Yeah, yeah. Um, also, uh, Natalie Portman um, was wearing this like cape that on the kind of hem of it had um, uh, like Wong, Gerwig, Diop, um, Hella, Skama. Like all these last names of women directors that were snubbed. So it was um, the directors for Hustlers, The Farewell, Little Woman, Atlantic's Queen and Slim, Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood, Portrait of a Lady on Fire, and Honey Boy. And so she had all these like. Imagine being a female director who made a film last year and not being on Natalie Portman's cape. Fuck you. You'd be like, I'm the lowest of the low. (laughs) (laughs) I've been snubbed from her cape. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Dub snubbed. Dub snubbed. (laughs) The rear dub snub. (laughs) Uh, Anyway, so. Eminem still beloved. Oh by no! You everyone. know what's a fucking horrible song as well is um is uh, um 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 I'm not afraid. That song's so right. Yeah, you're picking his worst late, songs. Late Eminem, man. What like see? Well, you don't like Stan. We wouldn't have the phrase you know- standing. You wouldn't be able to stand people so as hard as you do without the song Stan. You're right. Which is a fucking work right. of art. You're always saying, now yeah. this looks like a job for me. <laughs> You're always saying that, yeah. AJ. Yeah. yeah. That's true. Um, and he's got, he had wow. that, he's got t- two new albums that he dropped just without fanfare, and both of them are pretty well received, except for his new album's got some pretty, some pretty dark uh, stuff on it. Um, uh, but it's, you well, know. Well, look, you guys, uh, you guys have really challenged my unconscious biases towards white men. So thank well, I think. Well, you, you just so came much. out so hot being like, <laughs> Eminem fucking sucks. Uh, and I was like, I wouldn't expect you to have maybe, an opinion on Eminem. Maybe it's a Christchurch thing. Maybe it's a Christchurch thing. No one I know likes Eminem anymore. Yeah. Uh, Except you two. <laughs> yeah, well, we, we moved to Auckland and we'd. Yeah, to be with our own kind. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, okay, best original Even score went to Joker. Um, Hilda and I do not know how to pronounce the last name. Um, it's uh, what, what's uh, where's she from? I- Icelandic. Um, yeah, it's an Icelandic last name. Um, but she composed the music for Chernobyl as well. Oh, wow. And so it's like, yeah, she. I saw that it was like she deserves a um, an Academy Award for her work on Chernobyl. But sure, give it to her for the clown movie. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, she um, she's the third female composer to win. Um, the best original score, and they did a a thing where they get like the band leader to kind of 
just do like a little sample of each of the the things and for the first time ever that was uh conducted by a woman um her name yeah. is pronounced hilda guth nadortia there you go so <laughs> Uh, <laughs> it is it is not spelt Guth. I haven't looked at it until now. Yeah. It is not spelt that way, so that is confusing. Yeah, well, it's got one of those letters that I guess is pronounced T H, but it does not look like that. It's an O with a little thing on top of it. Anyway, um, yeah, this is like yeah, this pretty pretty comfortably could have gone to any of them. I'm glad she won it though because she was the only female nominated, and I am part of the woke brigade. <laughs> it tears off my this my way, mask. guys. <laughs> Even even with the most unwoke film of 2019, it's like like we could still we could still make it win for its, I don't its think one it's the most like unwoke vaguely film woke. of 2019. What's this? What is the most unwoke film of 2019? Laquisha. <laughs> mm, that's shit, man. You really, uh, you really came to the party with a gun, <laughs> man. Like, like you really were prepared for that response. Yeah, and also I I, I was tossing up between that and cuck. Um, Oh Loquisha Aaron, if you haven't heard about it, is a film where a middle-aged white man gets fired from his radio job and he says, fuck, you know what? Black people, especially black women, have it so easy. And oh, so he, he, he starts a new radio show where he's uh, plays this character called Loquisha and he's like, mm-hmm, Loquisha's here to answer all your problems, honey. And he just plays this character throughout the whole film and then he learns nothing about himself presumably i haven't seen the film i really want someone to suggest it for our <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> for our patreon podcast um was this like a large budget film no a very small budget <laughs> <laughs> yes yeah, <it's> Leonardo <laughs> DiCaprio. <funded. laughs> he, re- he realizes that um black women have it so easy and so he says i'm going to become the joker <laughs> 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 all right so uh animated short hair love um that, that was kind of one of those ones that seemed locked in um that played before Angry Birds 2, I found out in the stones. <laughs> Best live action short film went to a film called The Neighbor's Window, which, um, from what I understand, sounds better than um, the winner of that award last year. Oh, my God. About the, the guy who <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> got yeah. tattooed with, with blackface. Um, documentary short subject, subject was that learning to skateboard in a war zone if you're a girl, that one. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, and documentary feature went to American Factory, which was um, the first film made by... Uh, Barack and Michelle Obama's um, production company. The rich just get richer, huh? Yeah. Is there a production company called Obama Rama? And if it's <laughs> not, why is it not called Obama Rama? Uh, it's called Higher Ground Productions. Well, there you go. But yeah, it's a Netflix. Um, they like they it's had called a just a bunch of Obamas. <laughs> nice. All right, international feature film. You ready for a big shock, Aaron? Yes, please. Parasite one. Good lord. Yeah. Good. Who would Lord. have thought a South Korean film could take out an international feature film? Wow. It's never done it before. <laughs> really? Yeah. Wow. That's a um, big night for that film. Yeah. Well done to them. Yeah. They'll be happy with that. <laughs> um, yeah. Oh, man. Bong Joon-ho, just watching him, like his his award for best original screenplay. And there's, because his uh, co-writer is talking and Bong's in the background holding his Oscar in front of him. And he just stares at it for ages and then just starts giggling. And it's so cute. <laughs> there's gifts of it you'll be able to find. Um, but also, in possibly the only upset of the night that I'm truly upset about, uh, Toy Story 4, one best animated feature film, which I normally would not be unhappy about. But man, did I want class to win. It's I'm funny, so isn't sorry. it? Because I, I actually, I like Toy Story. I think Toy Story Four is a better film than Klaus, but I wanted Klaus to win just for the, for the statement. So this is, it's yeah. like you know, it's a good Oscars when the the biggest upset of the night is an award went to a film you really like, <laughs> but you know, not one that you wanted to win. Yeah. Um. But yeah, yeah, I feel you um and then yeah the uh adapted screenplay and original screenplay as we've mentioned already uh adapted screenplay went to Jojo rabbit for taika waititi and right. uh, original screenplay went to parasite bong joon ho and uh han jun won do they read a translated version when they're of, reading the screenplay of the uh it's interesting. I, th- I think so yeah yeah because they did um they like play a clip of the film with the screenplay like running over top of it as like an overlay yeah and um yeah it was like in korean and in english yeah um <laughs> or you just imagine like everyone they're like all right here's the screenplay and they go it's in korean and they're like 
Yeah, it looks good. <laughs> <laughs> the effort, the effort, the academy, the academy put into their voting process. Yeah. Yep, <laughs> looks good. Toy, st- another Toy Story. Yep. <laughs> um. Uh, but yeah, Jojo Rabbit winning for um the third screenplay. There are some moments in your life where you understand what patriotism feels like. Yeah, is this one of them? Mm. Yes. Nice. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Yeah, man. It's yeah, man. it's a good um change from when how unpatriotic patriotic i felt when aj said that eminem was shit oh, and i was man. like i don't want to be from the same country as this person <laughs> 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 um yeah no i'm i'm super stoked with it winning um best adapted and uh yeah man taika taika dude taika bro he's it he's taika bro he, i prefer i've taika, taika bro, bro. <laughs> i prefer you know, like I'm proud. I'm I'm. I grew up. I grew up being such a um outcast from such a loser. T- t- typical New Zealand uh, s- culture, I think, because like I didn't like sport and I didn't drink a lot as a teenager, so I always felt like I wasn't that patriotic. But Taika has like made me be like, yeah, I'm from New Zealand. Yeah, we've got that you know? one thing. Yeah. Yeah, I'm still not in touch with my feelings. <laughs> don't worry i'm still a kiwi i'm like taika yeah <laughs> yeah yeah taika trying to make me cry with his film <laughs> i'm a fucking kiwi male you're not gonna get tears out of this boy let's try mate <laughs> slip that by <laughs> uh all right so you're the four acting categories actor went to joaquin for joker actress went to renee for Judy supporting actor went to Brad for Once Upon a Time Hollywood and supporting actress to Laura for um, Marriage Story. Uh, yeah, have you I guys, mean, has anyone wrong. seen Judy? Uh, no, I made a point of going to watch it last week, but now that I'm not watching a film every day, uh, I'm struggling to find the, um, what's the word? giving a shitness to do it <laughs> um like it just seems like such a, i'm i'm sure she's great in it but it's always such a bummer when it when a, an award as big as that goes to such a um underplay you know what i mean like yeah, one yeah. that no one's talking about like it would have been awesome to see it go somewhere else yeah it's just like like it's one of those ones where the trailer came out everyone was like oh she's gonna win the oscar for this and it's like yeah or it could be real shit <laughs> And yeah, it's like, I think the movie still maybe was kind of shit, I don't know, but I mean, she's, I, I mean, I guess quite good enough, but again, like she's playing a, a Hollywood actress who never won an Oscar. So this is like somewhat awarding Judy mm. Garland's legacy. Yeah. You know? And I think I were, I'm all, all right with Brad Pitt winning for Once Upon a Time, though I don't think any of the nominated best supporting actors, no, Joe Pesci, actually, he was probably the best. Yeah, um, he was um, Brad Pitt's like actually. a legacy one, I guess, that it's like, he's never won for acting before. Yeah. Um, and it's like watching clips of Once Upon a Time in Hollywood again. I'm like, he is real good in it. And it's one of those things where it's like, you think, oh, he's just playing Brad Pitt. Or he's just playing a laid back, cool guy. And it's like, he's actually like embodies that character so completely. And it's like, yeah. just because you can't see him trying doesn't make it any, any better or worse. Yeah. And I think there is an inclination. I think I talked about yeah. last week that like, you know, if you don't see people like sweating or like crying or like yeah. being a gritty emotional thing, then like it's kind of dismissed as like not that good a performance, you oh, yeah. know? Whereas like, I don't know, if you can make a transcendently good uh, performance that's just like you kind of having fun on screen just in a, a way. Cool yeah. Then it's like, this is pretty good, man. You do yeah. basically nothing, but he's still like knocking it out of the park. Yeah, yeah for sure. And, um, I was gonna. I didn't. Didn't. Uh, I don't think it came up last week. But just talking about the acting performances. You know. Um, did you end up watching the second half of Marriage Story? Uh, no, I did not. Because <laughs> <laughs> you know this this whole thing about the 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 one scene that everyone shares everywhere and yeah. of the them yelling at each other, and there's like this thing of people uh, will see that on Twitter and go they're just yelling and crying. That's not good acting. Do what do you what do you think of that kind of I think that your real question should be to what extent do you like believe the performance oh, yeah. and like its nuance as opposed to like, yeah, they're like yelling, crying, and that's like what an argument is. It doesn't necessarily make it good acting, yeah. but like, you know, like I could yell at you right now, it doesn't make it good and acting. It would make me cry. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Break your spirit. <laughs> and um, if I can, if I can add to that, Aaron, and in, in defense of that, that marriage story scene, which I 
Well, I was I'm, I was blown away by that scene. Like, yes, yelling is the easiest form of acting, but you know, like I've been to enough amateur, seen enough amateur performances, and watched you know amateur actors yell and rolled my eyes at the fact that they can yeah. do a yelling, crying, sniveling scene like that and it take your breath away is like. Yeah. That's fucking good acting then because that, yeah. that may, maybe in a vacuum that scene isn't impactful but after watching that whole movie and being in the in each of those characters corners and then seeing it get to a place that's just so um sorrowful explosive. and upsetting and explosive yeah like that scene affected me so much and I got so angry when people were were tearing it down as not being yeah. good acting because it's like it's, yeah. it's 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 in a marriage with the story <laughs> I didn't even story. plan that at all <laughs> like, like it's the it's the story that has led you to this point where this acting elevates the marriage story yeah 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 exactly yeah. it doesn't exist in like a vacuum i think a lot of people like when they see those scenes they're like it's not good acting but you're 100 percent right like a mm. performance is built out of you know two hours of acting rather than like one scene you know yeah yeah because i remember when aaron and i we, when we were in an acting course together there was one girl that used to always cry in her performances and i remember and everyone was like she's the best look at her she can just cry on key and i remember me and you talking about like She's just crying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, it's kind of different between like just crying and like, is this and like an authentic expression of what the script is asking you to do? Yeah. And do you feel like this is, I mean, yeah. Do you feel like this is reality? And do you feel like these are two people who exist in the yeah. world who are talking to each other? And I guess it's the same thing as the cinematography that it's like, there's good acting, there's bad acting and there's acting that's appropriate for the, yeah, the scene, exactly. and you know, in Marriage Story, that they earn this explosion, um, which yeah. if you just saw, and I'm sure there's going to be fucking all over the world, there is going to be amateur like um, film class or acting classes that choose this scene, and it's going to be terrible, and they're not going to earn it, and they're just going to scream at each other. Um, but yeah, it fully earns it. And you've got two like of the most of the best actors in the world, um. And that's Joaquin beautiful... Phoenix as the Joker. Oh, look. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, AJ, do you think Joaquin deserved the the, the Oscar? Uh, actually, I, I, it's, it is my favorite thing about Joker, because, but it's yeah. because it's Joaquin Phoenix. And it might be a problematic script or whatever you want to say about it, but it's like, yeah, but Joaquin Phoenix is one of the greatest actors alive today. Yeah, and he actually is part of the Woke Brigade. And he actually is part of the Woke Brigade. He was just deceived by the... the <laughs> <laughs> the yeah. unwoke brigade um and <laughs> like you know he plays a performance that's good enough that people were concerned <laughs> for, for what it might do to the world and i yeah. i i liked his Sweet performance you, you know what i mean I, I i can recognize it as good there was never an issue with joker like no one was saying it's, it was bad acting it might be a bad script but he delivers it very well um and i think that yeah. that uh it is also cool that someone that the same character you say it i said it before and you told me i was dumb for saying yeah it. yeah you just said <laughs> yeah, you, you phrased it real poorly but it's the second time that two different actors have won for playing the same character um the first time was al pacino no sorry uh marlon brando robert and de robert de niro both won for playing um vito corleone in the godfather and its sequel um and so that was like supposed to be to the same person at two different times in their mm. life whereas this is two completely different interpretations of the same character so um, because of course Heath Ledger won for um the yeah. dark knight but Which it's is a cool when Joaquin's, story you know yeah yeah, yeah. um and Joaquin's speech he um uh he didn't thank anyone he 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 did his kind of like like he's been doing on the campaign trail, you know, used his platform to talk about you know um, veganism and climate change and, and racism and all this stuff, um, and then he he right at the end quoted his brother, um, River Phoenix who died uh, far too young, and uh, yeah it was, it was an interesting speech and then Renee Zellweger like his speech went on for for quite a while and then Renee's went on for quite a while as well. And then uh, that resulted in uh, when uh, Bong Joon-ho won, well, he'd already won Best Director for Parasite at this point. And so there you go, he won. There you go. Um, and, but when um, Parasite won Best Picture, the final award of the night, the, a couple of the people did 
their speeches and then they brought down the lights and they cut to Jane Fonda to, to um, you know, finish the night. And then clearly they had more to say because they, they, they only spoke for a minute and nine seconds um, before they brought the lights down on them. And then the whole crowd is like, up, up. And so you see like Tom Hanks and Shelley's there and in the front row being like, up, up, up. And mm-hmm. then eventually they like cut away from Jane Fonda and brought the lights back up and they got to finish their speeches. And there was like this, this cute little like older woman who was just like, um it was so good to like just, yeah, just yeah. like a real like because obviously it contributes very little language. to the rest of the conversation but it's <laughs> it's very wholesome yeah. to watch <laughs> yeah because it's like because english is her second language she's speaking in such like simple terms yeah like mm. like one syllable words and it's just very it's, like wholesome very like sweet. this is yeah and so that was great and that was i mean when when bong won um best rigged i like i clapped I was like, I was so stoked. And then it won Best Picture, and I was like, "Fucking tonight's the night, uh, yeah, yeah." Because his his speeches were so great as well. Yeah. Like after winning international film, he was like, uh, "I can't wait to drink tonight." And then, <laughs> and he like thank he said like, you know, I started when in film school, I studied Martin Scorsese, and then he like got Martin to stand up and got everyone to give a standing ovation to Martin Scorsese, and then, um, and he said that like when he was starting out that like tarantino would always put his films in like his top 10 of the year and stuff like that which gave him so much exposure and and all this stuff and then tarantino like very begrudgingly is like no thank you and so <laughs> yeah because tarantino has one of the worst poker faces at hiding how angry he is that he didn't win. <laughs> um do you think that the the them trying to ask to put the lights back up for the end of the speech that's such a microcosm for what's wrong with the Oscars, right? Like it's this, it's, yeah. it's this, this, the, the Oscar, I was thinking about this because after the independent spirit awards the other night, which I think I'm going to invest more in them next year than the Oscars, because I don't know. They just, I just like what they stand for better, I guess. Um, mm. But like the Oscars is a great idea. This is what I was thinking about. The Oscars is a great idea to, to, to put a, a respected, um, you know, line in the sand, a recognition of the best of the year in any particular art form, but film specifically, is a really good idea, but the Academy is so rotten, man. And it's it's like, uh, it's just so frustrating to watch year after year. And you know, this was a good Oscars, and I'm I'm I feel bad to to bring up any kind of ill will because it did kind of it did, it did as i said before it feels like we bullied them into doing something good again this year but but like how many times is it going to switch back and forth and how many times are we going like this past week when a, a oscar voter and someone from the academy came out and like revealed their like brut- was it a brutally honest academy brutally voter? honest oscar ba- ballots yeah and, and so it- yeah the, the hollywood reporter did um like a male and a female who both are academy voters and got them to reveal what they voted for and it's like uh, I don't think foreign films should be nominated with real movies. I want an American, like um, Sam Mendes did great for 1917, but I want an American director to win and like all these things. It's just like, you have to remember that the Academy is eight and a half thousand people that just want their mate to win or have their own yeah. weird biases. Exactly. And it's, it's, it was so, <laughs> it's so horrible to see how empty, like empty headed these people seem because I remember um when uh well, something else happened that that was, um, uh, it was it was before that, like just after the the nominations came out, another Oscar voters like opinions were were made public, and it was oh it was it was about why Adam Sandler and J Lo weren't nominated among others, and it was like yeah. it was like racist, like it was it was racism bubbling. Just I mean I know Adam Sandler's white, but in J Lo's case specifically, it was it was using terms Aaron like um uh not the type of actress who wins Oscars. You know what I mean? And what it's like, hmm, fuck? what is it? What is it about this actress that makes them not the kind of actress that wins Oscars, you know? And it's yeah. uh, it was so gross. And just to, the way the way it talked about Adam Sandler as being like, you know, if he makes another another couple of films like Uncut Gems, then he'll be nominated. And it's like, what are you talking about? This is what the Oscars should be about is celebrating this kind of like surprising and and challenging shit that comes out, you know? Like uh, it, it it just seems so anti to what the Oscars I think should be about when I when I read those statements and I was like this is 
the the problem the problem is is that the oscars is opinion maths right so it's not and we've talked about this before and i know you guys probably know this but they don't all sit around in a room and decide what gets what they don't all sit around in a room and vote these are these are the eight films that should get nominated and this is the one that should win it's everyone judges a film and the maths are done to tally what the best film that uh, you know what the highest voted on film and in a year where <laughs> parasite won a bunch of shit i feel very uh you know sheepish saying this but when your opinion maths more often than not result in films like green book winning um the problem is not that it needs to go to a a judge by a panel kind of thing the problem is that the people in the academy have biases and have opinions and have antiquated views and i mean i don't know how you know, I'm 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 too cynical to believe that there wasn't any tampering done to make to make Parasite win the year, and I think that that you should you, they should just redo re re kick everyone out of the academy and then put different people in it. I don't know. I think that's a very logical thing to do, especially as we progress as society to get new voices and new opinions judging these. Yeah, things. well, I mean, that's the thing that they that they always do. It was uh, uh, the year after the year of Oscars so white the, when that hashtag became a thing. Um, that was when they were like, we're going to actually like next year bump up the diversity. Uh, but who knows if they ever actually did that. (laughs) But it's not just bumping up the diversity. You also have to, to take it out the other end as well, because otherwise you're, you're, that's always going to be a minority unless they literally double the amount of people in there. Right. Like just kick people out of the Academy. Who gives a shit? I don't care. Well, there should be like a statute of limitations that like, I mean, maybe there is, but it's like, you know, you, you can vote on Oscars for uh, up to 10 years after you work on a movie. Or something, that's such you know? a good idea, man. Yep. I like think, it's, I think it's, that's you, you have idea. your Academy membership has to be renewed every time you work on a movie kind of thing. like it, it renews every time you work on mm. something. But yeah, I think the, the kind of problems that you highlight with the Oscars is a kind of distinctly American problem. Well, maybe mm. not distinctly American problem, but it seems like somewhat, kind of reflective of their own political system like even if you look at the nomination of hillary clinton in the like um the democratic seat last time that Mm. was just basically a result of you know a small segment of the democratic party like tipping the scales you know um which is kind of you know and you you see now you know the kind of like grassroots movement in the democratic party of people like being like no, this is fucking bullshit let's, yeah. let's organize ourselves and you know like create a kind of a, a wave of change by you know uh, inspiring young progressive ideology and getting the shit done and then you know you have a whole lot of young senators come through or not senators house of representatives members come through in 2018 it's like you know people react against this shit and also like you know popular opinion can change very swiftly yeah. you know what i mean and that's, i think that's probably the one hope that you can yeah. have for the oscars is yeah, that okay. like you know people will start being like oh like quite quickly be like oh wait maybe we shouldn't just like vote for all of our white friends because yeah. like you know that's not how we live anymore y'all and yeah. I'm, I'm glad you brought that up, Aaron, because moments before I found out Parasite won Best Picture, I found out after three days of caucusing that Pete Buttigieg officially won Iowa. And by officially, I mean he fucking cheated. And if you don't think he cheated, you probably also think Jeffrey Epstein killed himself. All right. Um, <laughs> I have not been following the Iowa caucus thing oh, at all. I keep seeing references dude, to it. Dude, there, oh, are, there is footage of people flubbing it so that Buttigieg wins. It's insane. It's it's bas- basically the media hates Bernie Sanders and he actually did real well and was going to win. And so they buried it until uh, people got confused and the app that counted the votes was like funded by Buttigieg. And the way the way a split um, caucus decides who they're going to vote for is they flip a coin, which feels very rudimentary. But you see a guy flipping a coin for one of the caucuses. It's on Twitter. He flips a coin and I, I, there's no point doing this visually because this is an audio medium um but let's just say a coin toss is a very hard thing to fake because it's very obvious and there's all these eyes on this guy flipping a coin catching it in in his hand looking at it and then moving his fingers around like you know potentially flipping it upside down and then he looks at it and then flips it again with this it's so obvious it is such a anyway anyway. the way to cheat a coin toss is you flick it up 
catch it in your hand. If it's the result you want, you go, it's there. If not, you slap it on your <laughs> on the other hand and go, yeah. oh, it's the opposite. <laughs> yeah, 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 That's yeah. T- fucking t- cheating 101. <laughs> Listen up, <laughs> Iowa. <laughs> <laughs> um oh that's interesting so overall this is a pretty good year for the oscars like yeah, the results yeah but anyway. it's uh, yeah, yeah it is it is and and the the benefits will be for for this for the films that um that you know come in the wake of of ones like parasite winning uh could be really good for hollywood um well not even hollywood for the for the industry but i'm i you know one good year does not make me want to trust them completely anymore especially after right all the yeah shit that i mean but out. just fucking you know just have a good time just enjoy it yeah with the independence parasite one <laughs> yeah you're right that is yeah. good and and let's let's focus on the good um while, yeah i mean like, like if, you're, if you get the 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 group of nominees you're given this is some of the best possible results 100 percent. yeah Agreed. i mean yeah sure you can you can talk about the the snub who got snubbed and everything like that but you know, this is we've we've got what we got. You, you can't be like, oh, and actually, we found another nomination. Greta Gerwig wins best director. <laughs> With what we're given, we got like, you know, some of the, some of the best results. And even like, you know, aside from the snubs, like Parasite winning best picture, best director is like phenomenal, one hundred percent deserved. Um, and winning best screenplay is is even yeah. Like I wasn't expecting Amazing. that at all. You know, yeah. Um, I wonder how yeah. many um. No, oh, you keep talking. I was going to say how many um. Well, shall I shall I films. shall I wrap up the show, make this a clean sub one hour thing so I can edit it and chuck it out? Yeah. As, go as fast it, as possible. Well, thank you everybody for listening to the Cop Pop Show Oscar season. We've got one more Oscar season episode coming at you in a fortnight where we're gonna be talking about what would win the Oscars of the entire decade. Uh, and next week we're returning to film franchise Fortnites with everybody's uh favorite secret agent who, when you watch earlier films, they're not very good, and it's pretty disturbing. Um, 007, we're starting James Bond. We're finally doing 007 as our 100th franchise, arguably. Depending next, on how you count next, it. <laughs> exactly. Um, and, yeah, so that's us next week. Uh, if you liked this episode, then please consider supporting Cole Pop Show all the places by liking and subscribing and following and, and commenting and 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 liking But the, where you like the specific podcast and not just the page or whatever do all that um and you can find us on facebook youtube instagram twitter at cold popsha you can email us at coldpopshamedia at gmail.com leave a five star review on apple podcasts and you can also find us on acast um yeah and uh join our discord which the link to will be in the show notes and up patreon but whatever anyway did you find out that thing you were looking for uh yeah i don't i don't know (laughs) So, you did find well, it out, uh, or you don't know? I don't know. Oh, <laughs> this was a pleasure talking to you guys. I, I enjoyed. I enjoyed this. This was good. It's good to to debrief in such a way. I think. Yeah, and uh, not debrief by um, taking off our briefs. <laughs> That's, that'll be later on. <laughs> Richard, hey, thanks, Aaron, for for joining us again. Hey, thanks for having me, guys. It's always a pleasure to talk Oscars with you guys. Uh-oh. Yeah, yeah. And we will see everybody next week. Uh, and be sure to stay for the post credit scene after the music Ooh. plays at the end of this episode. Goodbye. Uh, all right, bye. Bye. Uh, hello thanks for sticking around uh here we are listen post credit scene a la marvel um and dc to a lesser extent it wasn't started by them though there were post credit scenes in movies before them and there were post credit scenes in movies after them Um, and um, can i just say um what a good episode of the cold publisher podcast that was yep i agree whole what was your favorite part uh, when we talked about the Oscars, because I know for a fact that, the, yeah. <laughs> that that's the episode. <laughs> yeah. I thought some of your language uh, was gonna... um, a bit problematic, but um, yeah, I think yeah. Uh, on the whole, I think we learned a lot. And I, th- I think there's a lot there that you'll be able to learn from moving forward, which is the most important thing. Um, so what are we here to talk about today? Well, this is our Patreon 
uh, exclusive segment for five dollar and up tier where uh, people who are part of that tier or are above can send us um, a question or a challenge or a discussion topic for us to have a small little little bants about in this this here the post credit sequence Richard and this episode the post credit sequence is brought to us by Craig Major and he has a bit of a long question but it's it's an interesting one he says is there anything you've seen in a film tv episode web video etc that your brain just absolutely failed to comprehend to the point that you aren't entirely sure that you actually saw it he says an example of mine is in bruno where he makes the avant-garde show featuring the guy with the swinging dong and the man's urethra speaks the name bruno as if it were a mouth another one is a web video of a girl singing a taylor swift song then she pulls her underwear down and her vagina sings the rest of the chorus i saw this on facebook about 10 years ago wtf i guess for me talking or singing genitals is just too much for my brain so richard has you have you ever seen anything in media whatever that media may be that you just failed to comprehend the bruno penis um which i is like one of the only things i remember about that movie and is such a great answer to that question um but yeah i this question frustrated me so much um because why we can i guess why this why is it because you know you have an answer for it but you couldn't remember the example yeah, I, I've been trying, racking my brain for like, well, like six weeks almost, trying to think of an answer to this, and I just mm. cannot. I can't think yeah. of a single answer, but I know there must be something. It's that weird, like, moment where you question whether or not you're dreaming because you just saw something so absurd. And Yeah, it's a bra moment. Yeah, it's a total bra moment. <laughs> um, but I do have an answer, Richard. I have an oh, answer. Good. I'm glad and- you do, because, yeah. It's from a web video, which I feel is probably the dominant form of which these kinds of moments happen, I yeah. reckon. It would be non, non-narrative non media that you see on the internet. And my answer is from a um, sort of alternate reality game. Oh, it wasn't really a game, though. It was. It's from a YouTube channel called Alan Tutorial. Have you heard of Alan Tutorial? No. So you're familiar with YouTube tutorials and how, you know, I'm familiar with YouTube, a million yeah. of them for anything you want to do. Alan tutorial was like a satirical tutorial series uh, where a very softly spoken um, guy records from his handy cam and teaches you to do, you know, things that you don't need to know how to do, essentially. Like, yeah. I remember one of them is how to, how to crush cans with two slacks of wood. And stuff like that. Like, real, real obscure things. And he, and he talks like this. And he's like, oh, welcome to, this is my tutorial. This is Alan tutorial. And, uh, this is what the, the- and, and it goes on and on and on. And, like, most of the show is just, like, obscure tutorials that you'd never need to know. But as, as it goes on, and it was actually an art piece by the, a guy who now works for Adult Swim and has done, um, such viral Adult Swim, um, kind of dark mysteries as uh this house has people in it and unedited footage of a bear i believe it's by him and um and in, in this in this series it basically gets really really dark as it goes on and it and it, while he doesn't say anything you get the increased kind of feeling like someone's chasing him like he's boarding himself in rooms and sort of just muttering to himself with each episode you know he'll be in like this super crowded messy room going tutorial tutorial and and the the episode titles just become gibberish and the final three episodes are all set within this like it looks like he's in a trash compactor like there's garbage mm-hmm. everywhere you can't really see what's going on you don't really he's like barefoot everything's wet and dirty and um it's very scary and and he sort of spends these last episodes looking around this empty space for desperate for something to give you a tutorial on uh and i there is a moment and I think it's either the second to last or maybe the third to last episode where he's in this trash compactor looking thing where the camera mo- moves past something. And because it's dark and because it's not the highest quality footage, uh, you see a very upsetting moving thing. And it's not really clear what it is. And it stays on. It maybe cuts back to it maybe two or three times, but he's not focusing on it. He doesn't want you to see what it is. 
but because it's an art project you know that the intention is for you to be able to see whatever this thing is and the best way i can describe it is it kind of looks like you know when you go to a kebab shop and they got those big hunks of meat like spinning on a don a kebab yeah yeah it looks like one of those on the ground like spinning around (laughs) And uh, a lot of people say it's a dog. It's like a little fluffy dog. And just the way it's turning makes it look like it's some other like weird gyrating meat monster. Uh, But I feel like this is the... This is the definitive answer to this question for me. I I apologize it took so long to get there. But it's this creepy little meat monster on the the floor in in the middle of this video that isn't focused on at all. Uh, And that's my answer. Nice, that's a good one. Um, I the other the only sort of closest thing I have to an answer, I guess, is um, my friend and I used to always used to go and get like ten zombie movies out from the. I think I've spoken about this before. You know, you get like yeah, ten yeah. rentals for ten bucks, and we'd go get a weekend. And there's there's some of those that are like sh- that that surely there was one. It was an Australian movie called Undead, and I think it was just mm-hmm. called Undead. And the um the poster has like someone with like three shotguns attached to be one shotgun and the movie ends with like people floating up into space and i mm. just have a real vague memory of that and being like this movie's real fucking weird 